So we did that. It took, um, in this case, this is about, I don't know, four or five years ago, it took 30 minutes to run. And uh, there were no significant interactions found in the data set. Um, it did find eight significant factors, rating area, vehicle, vehicle category, um, which would be uh, sort of like a symbol, vehicle symbol. Um, or the, actually, the category might just be things like uh, personal vehicle, truck, pickup truck, and so forth. Age, NCD is um, no claims discount. So um, if you, uh, you know, accident-free history, how long have you been accident-free? Driver restriction, vehicle age. Um, change over the last year's premium and market competitiveness. Certainly the market competitiveness uh, will indicate, you know, how well your, uh, your policyholders will renew. Um, and certainly the larger the change you have in your premium, um, the more likely it is that person's going to shop around. Uh, my guess is it probably didn't even have that data. We're, we're going to be able to pull the data up later on. Um, and uh, where this data came from, I don't even know. Um, but it probably was an abbreviated data set. We probably chopped off some stuff, and it was just kind of used for a test. So um, certainly the values that come out of here and the, the predictor values and the, very, the values that we come up with the variables, I would, they're, they're probably nonsense. But they, it's, a, it's a good enough data set to just kind of see what happens. Um, but that's a good question. I mean, certainly you would expect um, policyholder tenure is going to be an extremely uh, predictive variable uh, with retention. Um, on CART, uh, and, and again, we're going to get into this a little bit later as we open it up and, and look through it. Mikhail's going to spend some time actually going through this particular case study. But CART found essentially the same factors. Um, the ROC was 0.7, and there were no significant interactions found. So um, with our initial case study, relatively small for insurance perspective, uh, number of observations, and uh, not a very robust data set in terms of only 11 predictors. Um, CART and Emblem basically found the same thing. Yes? In retention projects, sometimes I've found breadth of relationship, the depth of relationship for good predictors. Mm -hmm. Would this insurance company also have home or, or other things besides auto that you could use that to say, you know, maybe somebody who's not going to less likely to cancel their auto if they have Absolutely. Kind of Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, for this, no. No, no. Um, but absolutely, all of that stuff would be extremely important, knowing sort of uh, uh, what sort of groups, what, what sort of groups of policy uh, or insurance uh, products that they're, that they're buying uh, the, that they have, yes. Just a quick question. Could you describe that market, market competitiveness factor? Yeah, that's a difficult uh, factor. I actually don't know with this data set where it came from. Uh, it was a data set that we were allowed to use publicly, so I have a feeling it was somehow cleansed and, and uh, destroyed from its original source so that basically uh, it wouldn't be of value to anybody if they actually tried to get the var variables out of there. That's probably why we don't have things like policyholder tenure, other sources of uh, insurance products, and so forth. Uh, but market competitiveness is an attempt to try and measure uh, uh, how, how variable or how, how close your competitors are in terms of price. Um, usually what you find, I mean, there are probably 1,000 or 2,000 insurance companies in the US, but they don't all write the same insurance, and they don't all play in the same market space. So um, what you will find is that most companies can identify probably three to five companies that they believe are their key competitors for the market segments that they actually write. If they're in personal auto, non-standard, and they write youthful drivers or something. Maybe they know, in, in a particular state, maybe they know, OK, these five companies are the companies that really, when we lose a policy, we know they're going to these guys. And what they do, what you can do then is just measure sort of, since um, a lot of uh, rates for insurance companies are publicly available, you can find out sort of what your competitors are charging and measure sort of how many people are lower than you um, where, do you, where, do you, where do you slot in in terms of competitiveness? Are you the lowest rate out there? Certainly, if you're the lowest rate out there, um, you're going to have a very high policyholder retention because nobody's going to be able to go anywhere. Um, but if you find that you, are, uh, you have five competitors and they're all lower than you, you're going to have a very low, you probably will have a very low policyholder retention. So this is just a measure of that. How they did, how they did this one, I'm not quite sure in this particular study. Any other questions? Okay. The second data set was a UK data uh, retention data set. And um, 
uh, had a little bit more, uh, a little more in terms of observations and predictors. We had 198,000 observations, um, and we had 135 predictors. And in this case, um, this actually was good data in terms of uh, it was client information, and so we had to scrub it to basically remove anything that was proprietary on it. So uh, we changed all the predictor variable names to things like um, rating variable 1, rating variable 2, level 1, level 2. So you couldn't tell really what it was. We identified which, which variables were categorical and which ones were continuous, um, but that was really the extent of the knowledge that you had about what the variables were. So it was sort of a blind study in terms of what the uh, variables were. Um, when we did the emblem analysis, we, uh, we found 57 significant predictors. And, uh, and now the, you can see when you move into a larger number of predictor variables, the, re the uh, forward, forward entry regression can tend to be a uh, lengthy process just because it's cycling through the same variables over and over and over again. Um, naturally, one easy way to fix that is just to uh, go through and, and minimize. You can usually, with some initial pre-processing, you can identify quickly uh, what is and what isn't going to work and, and limit this down. But this was just using a raw blind test. And um, on the same side, we ran this through CART and found 24 significant pre predictors, of which the uh, top 15 matched with Emblem. And uh, the remaining uh, were highly correlated with the rest of the predictors. So uh, we also relied on CART to identify the interactions, and six interactions were included in the model. Um, from here, so we have uh, a total of uh, 57 variables from ours and, and 24 from CART, of which 15 matched. Um, we were able to use that as a starting point and quickly whittle it down to uh, a number of predictors of 26 through the modeling process when we were using, um, using Emblem. In CART, yeah. you, just look, you just look in the tree and see where the splits are. So uh, for example, uh, in uh, homeowner's insurance, when we, the one example that I'm going to talk about in a minute, uh, one of the first splits was, uh, 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 let's see, what was it? It was, uh, it was, an, auto, it was an auto example. So it was multi-vehicle policies versus single vehicle policies. And once it split on that and the tree just kind of grew from there, you could see that that's going to certainly be an interaction in your, in your model. So you're just looking across your tree uh, for where you have key splits in your data. Um, the segmentation, which jumps right into that, um, it, it, CART does excel at identifying different segments in your data. Um, and it's a useful alternative to fitting many, many interactions. Interactions can get uh, pretty, pretty complicated, and they can also quickly exhaust your data. So um, uh, in this example, or in this, in this segmentation yeah, analysis, we uh, were able to find that just by splitting between multi-vehicle policies and single-vehicle policies, it can produce a lot cleaner in terms of intuitive and uh, simple to describe and explain uh, models when you just split on that particular variable. 